Dear students, now we are going to solve one important problem in impedance matching using Smitzer. A 50 ohm lossless transmission line is terminated in a load impedance of ZL is equal to 25 plus J 50 ohm. Use the Smith chart to find out the following parameters. Voltage standing wave ratio VSWR, voltage reflection coefficient, input impedance of the line given that the line is 3.3 lambda long and then input admittance of the line. Do you all understand this problem first? So we are going to find out all these parameters from the given data using Smith chart. So in the solution part, first we have to write the given data. So here the line is lossless transmission line with the characteristics impedance 50 ohm. The load impedance is 25 plus J 50 ohm. The length of the line is 3.3 lambda. Okay. So next we are going to solve this problem using Smith chart. So for that we can follow certain steps. The first step is to find out the normalized load impedance from the given load impedance. So it can be obtained by dividing the load impedance by its characteristics impedance. So we can get the normalized load impedance as 25 plus J 50 divided by characteristics impedance 50. So its value is 0 0.5 that is the resistance value and here 1 is the reactance value. So here it is plus 1J. So it is representing the inductive reactance on the Smith chart. That is the above the X is equal to 0 line. Okay. So after getting this, we are going to plot this normalized load impedance on the Smith chart at point P and then draw the impedance circle with the radius OP. So here this O is nothing but the center point that is R is equal to 1. Okay. That point is represented as O. Okay. So after that we can find out this VSWR value. Let's take this Smith chart to solve this problem. So here this circle is known as impedance circle. This one is known as reactance values. The outside layer is the wavelength. Okay. So here the straight line is represented is equal to x is equal to 0 line because at this point the reactance is 0. Okay. So now we are going to plot the point P that is the normalized load impedance. So what is the normalized load impedance here? Its value is 0 0.5 plus J. So here 0 0.5 means so this is the 0 0.5 circle okay so here we can take the circle and here the reactance value is what plus one so where the plus one value is here this one this is plus one you can see this one okay so this one is plus one we can take this reactant circle and we can take this resistance circle then we can get the intersection point that is denoted as p okay so this is nothing but the load impedance in terms of normalization that is equal to ZL by Z0. Do you all understand this one? Then we have to take the R is equal to one point that is considered as a origin. Okay, that is the center point. Then we have to take the line from this O to this P and consider this as the radius and draw the circle. So now we are going to draw the circle with this radius. Okay, so once it is drawn, then we can easily find out the value of this SWR. So here, the SWR can be directly calculated from the Smith chart. So by taking the intersection point of this circle and this X is equal to zero line. So here you can see this, the SWR value is 4.3. Okay, so that is the value of SWR. So from this we can find out the reflection coefficient. Do you all understand this one? Next we are going to find out the input impedance for this transmission line. Here the given length is 3.3 lambda. Okay, so here the normalized load impedance is given. From this we can get 
the location of the load by extending this line towards this outside circle. Okay, so we are going to extend this line from this O to this P to the outside line. Okay, then we can get the point where the load is located. Okay, so here that point is in between this 0.13 and 0.14. So that can be represented as 0.135 lambda. That is the load impedance point or the location of this load impedance point. So from this load, we can calculate the input impedance location by taking the clockwise rotation with the distance 3.3 lambda. So here 3 lambda, so this whole number cannot be taken into account because the one complete circle is known as 1 lambda. Okay, so if I am going to take the 3 lambda means it is coming over here again. So we have to consider only this fractional part. Then we are going to add this two points, point 0.135 plus 0 0.3. Okay, so the whole number represents one complete circle. Again, it is coming to the same point. We can simply ignore it. Okay, then we can get 0 0.435 lambda. So we are going to take a clockwise direction because the clockwise direction represents the generator side. So here we can take the clockwise direction to find out where the value 0 0.435 is located. Here it is 0 0.41, 0 0.42, 0 0.43 and then this one is 0 0.435. Okay, so here this is the location of that load impedance in terms of transmission line length. So here we can take this point as Q dash and then we can draw the straight line from this U dash to this origin O. Okay. So here we can simply draw the straight line from this Q dash to this origin. Then this line cuts this circle at one point that is known as the input impedance in terms of normalization. That means Z I dash is equal to what? Z I divided by Z naught. Do you all understand this one? So the value of this point can be calculated by taking the circle. So this circle, so we can take the circle. So this circle is nothing but what? 0 0.3. So here R value is what? 0 0.3. And here we can get the reactance value. So this line, right? So that is 0 0.4. Since it is below this X is equal to 0 line, it is a capacitive reactance. It can be represented as minus sign. So we can get minus 0.4J. So this is the normalized input impedance from this diagram. So from this we can find out that input impedance by multiplying this value by this Z0. So what is the last parameter to find out the admittance? So for that we can simply take the diagrammatically opposite value. So we can extend this point towards this side. Then at one point it cuts the circle. So that point is known as input admittance. So this is the normalized admittance. So next we are going to calculate the values of Zi and that Yi value. So for that we can get the values from Smith chart. The VSWR value is 4.3 correct. From this VSWR value we can calculate the reflection coefficient. So k is equal to s minus 1 by s plus 1. So we can write 4.3 minus 1 divided by 4.3 plus 1. Then we can get the answer as 0 0.622. So this is the value of the reflection coefficient for the given transmission line. So next we are going to find out the input impedance. For that we can get the value of the normalized input impedance from this Smith chart. So what is the normalized input impedance here? 0 0.3 minus 0 0.4 J. Okay. So that is the value here. We can get 0 0.3 minus 0 0.4 J value. So this can be multiplied with this Z0 to get Z in value. So here we can get Z in that is the input impedance is equal to what? 0 0.3 minus 0 0.4 J multiplied with 
50. Then we can get the answer as 15 minus J 20. So this is the input impedance value. So next we are going to find out the input admittance. Okay. So here the input admittance is 1.18 plus J 1.8. So here we can get that value as 1.18 plus J 1.8. So here we can get the input admittance by multiplying this normalized value with this conductance. Okay. So here conductance is nothing but 1 by impedance. So we are going to simply divide this normalized admittance with its characteristics impedance. So 1.18 plus J 1.8 divided by 50 to get the value of this input admittance. Do you all understand this concept? So here we can get 1.18 by 50 is 0 0.0236 plus J and then 1.8 that is divided by 50 is 0 0.036. This is the value.